many people who commit criminal acts are really schizophrenic. Now, you, you don't dare say that aloud because the schizophrenic societies are afraid of that. Now, what they do say is that the incidence of, uh, of uh, criminal behavior among schizophrenic patients is not any greater than it is among the general population. That's true. If you look at 100 normal people, and, and maybe one or two are criminals, if you look at 100 schizophrenics, maybe one or two are criminals. The big difference is that when a schizophrenic commits a crime, it's bizarre. <clears throat> There's no sense to it. It's one of these cases where a student, well, who is a nice, quiet student and never creates any problems, one day gets a gun and shoots 20 of his fellow students. These are schizophrenic, and you have to get inside their mind to understand why they did that. And modern psychiatry doesn't do that. They don't get inside the mind of the patient. In 1850, John Connolly, whom I mentioned earlier, brilliant English psychiatrist, wrote a book called Indications of Insanity. And he defined it, insanity, as a disease of perception combined with the inability to tell that these changes were real or not. I'll give you an example. He describes a woman who was depressed in his hospital, 1850. She was in her room and she was depressed because she knew her husband was dead. Well, he wasn't dead, but she knew he was dead. <clears throat> and she knew because she could see his ghost sitting on a tree outside her window. The ghost was a hallucination. She saw the ghost. She concluded it was her husband's ghost, therefore he must be dead. So she's depressed. Okay. So the uh, psychiatrist in charge tells her husband that. And so he says, he's a common sense kind of a guy, he says, well, let me go in and see her. Then she'll say, I'm not dead. So the psychiatrist said, no, you can't do that. That would, that would shock her too much. So when no one was looking, he was snuck into the bedroom anyway. She looked at him, fainted, got up and said, John, let's go home. Why? Because she still saw the hallucination, but she now knew it didn't mean her husband was dead. Therefore, there's no need to be depressed anymore. Now, I had, a, I had a patient, a schizophrenic woman, who was hearing voices. God was talking to her. And God said, burn down your neighbor's house. Now, when God talks, you listen to him, don't you? She did. She set fire to her neighbor's house. And she wound up in hospital. I treated her. She recovered. She is now runs her own business. She supervises 35 women. She has her own business she operates. She's been well ever since. If you're going to deal with if you're going to deal with strange behavior, you've got to get inside the brain of these patients and find out why did they do it? Why did you do it, what you did? They'll tell you. Every time they'll tell you. These, this kid that shot everyone, maybe he thought that there was a ma major plot against him. Everyone in school was after him, that they were all going to do some aim, and maybe he killed him in self-defense, as he saw it. And yet we do these terrible crimes. You heard about this four Mounties being killed in Canada. In Edmonton, just west of Edmonton, four RCMP officers were killed by one guy who was a terror of the community. He was well known as a terrible person. Had been in jail, had at least 15 convictions against him, but still nothing was done. The police went to recover some property that he'd stolen. He killed four of them, and then killed himself. Now why, why was he allowed to behave that way? Because no one really diagnosed him properly. Had they diagnosed him properly as schizophrenic, found out why he behaved the way he did, they could have incarcerated him, they could have treated him, they could have gotten him well. I'll give you an example of a, of a patient of mine who was a, he was a, uh, many years ago, 1960, I think, he was an American student getting his PhD at the University of Saskatchewan in physics. And one day, <coughs> he took a rifle, drove out to the edge of Saskatoon onto one of the fields, and began to shoot at the cars that were driving by. And so he was arrested by the... He didn't kill anyone. He was arrested by the RCMP. And his lawyer thought there's something bizarre about this guy. So he sent him to see me. And he came to talk to me. And he was glad. No emotion at all. He just, just talked and told me what happened. He told me about the things he had done. He says one, one day he was in Washington, D.C. in the library, in the National Library. He hid. <coughs> and when all the staff left and the doors were closed, he pushed all the stacks over thought that was great fun. Turned out this young man was schizophrenic. So I told the lawyer, I said, this guy is schizophrenic and I think we'd have to plead insanity. Hold up, don't take any action. Don't do anything. Let me see if I can get him well. So he began to come and see me every two weeks for treatment. I started him on niacin immediately. I saw him every two weeks for three months. And one day on the, after three months of visits, 
he came to me and he was full of anxiety. He was just he was just sweating. He, he, he was just pouring out. And I said, what's wrong? And he said, I just realized I might have killed someone. He had just regained insight. So I continued to work with him and then I advised the his lawyer that they, they, there was really no point prosecuting him. He was an American and we didn't want to get involved. So they said, so they said, they were very kind. They said, okay, they gave him a, a condition. They said, if you finish your PhD and get out of Canada as soon as you can, we won't prosecute. He went back to the States on vitamins. And later on, I heard he'd become a professor of physics at one of the American universities. That's what I mean. You have to find out why these people do what they do. I read two other cases that were pretty similar. One was uh, someone who he felt God had told him to drive for, no, the devil had told him to drive for 60 minutes and then stop and kill whoever he found. That's the famous Hoffman case. Yeah, that was terrible. He killed six or seven members of the family. The only one he didn't kill was the baby. There was a baby crawling on the floor and he didn't kill the baby. I asked him, why didn't you kill the baby? He said, because by that time I was tired of killing. Terrible story. And he had been in a mental hospital. He had told the, the psychiatrist in charge, he said, the devil tells me to do these things. They laughed at him. Had they treated him properly, he wouldn't have done that. He's still sitting today in a mental hospital in Ontario, in one of our chronic mental hospitals in Ontario. He'll die there. He destroyed the whole family, he destroyed himself. And so yeah. it's a very serious it's a very serious situation. And then in contrast there was another similar story where one of your patients went and shot a pillow between two of his parents. That's right. <coughs> uh, he was a, a young boy. He uh, one night he took a rifle and shot at his parents. He told me after he didn't want to hit him, he shot him between them. But after he had done what he did, he ran from the house at his bare feet. There was 40 below outside, froze his feet. The RCMP found him right away, took him in to the jail. And when he came to trial, I was for the defense, so I outlined what had happened. And we suggested that if they would release him to me under my care, I would admit him to my hospital where I was working in Saskatoon at the city hospital, that I would treat him. And luckily for the boy, the, the Crown, <coughs> the prosecutor didn't appear. Now, the reason was that the prosecutors were afraid to appear against me because they usually won my cases. And so the, he was told not to appear. Anyway, so the judge issued an order that this boy was to be released to my care. I promptly admitted him to the hospital, put him on treatment. He made a complete recovery. He then got a job up north in Saskatchewan. I think he's happily married. He's been fine ever since. Now here, here, is a, here are two cases where some harm could have come to certain people if the right action had not been taken. If the man that shot President Reagan had been treated with vitamins when the first psychiatrist saw him, he never would have shot the president. We just had a similar occurrence with uh, a woman who was, um, she was pretty much geared up to become the next prime minister of Sweden. Uh, yeah, I remember that. <coughs> Anna Lind. Yeah, that's a big case. That's a very famous case. They caught him, didn't they? Yeah. They have, I have the article right here from the BBC. Yeah. And uh, they say that uh, the self-confessed killer of Swedish foreign minister, Anna Lind, has told the Stockholm court that voices in his head make an attack the politician. Well, I believe that. They should have taken this, and they have to take that seriously. He said that, he says that he didn't know who she was. He hadn't singled her out. He just... He's following orders yeah. in his head. Yeah. 